Wow, I cannot even believe how many of you shared a similar experience with the AR-223 or the 223 in general. And not only that, especially the fact that some of you guys were saying that you literally stopped using the 223 because it's costed you dime potential animals. And when I heard that, I thought, oh my gosh, we never had that experience happen. We did lose some giant mythicals, but never any dime potentials, luckily. Um, but I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, I guarantee it. If I had that happen, I would never use it again for a long time too. It would go right to the storage unit and I wouldn't touch that thing. But unfortunately, what are you going to use? The 243? And here's the next argument. People are saying that, okay, so if you make the 223 stronger, then the 243 is going to be just as powerful as the 223. Or vice versa, the 223 will be just as strong as the 243. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, you're pretty much hunting the same animals with it anyways. So then, yeah, let us use the AR-223 to hunt whitetail with because you can hunt whitetail with a 223 caliber. It is legal. So then go for it. If that's what they want to do, give us the same caliber, or I should say the same power with the two calibers, then I'm fine with that. But otherwise, they got to increase the 223, and I don't know. There's nothing else they can do. That's it. There's only a couple options they can do. So thank you so much for letting me know all of your feedback. It really means a lot. And we're going to get our voices heard by everyone out there. So it means a ton. And each and every one of you are definitely needed in this. So I really, really appreciate that. That means a ton. So anyways, let's make it the best 2020, 23 that we're going to have ever. And I just want to say that we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for all of you guys. And can we please talk about that shot that we just pulled off? An 85 yard liver shot with the hawk edge bow as he was quartering away, turning to walk away from us. We squeezed one off and caught liver at 85 yards. Look at that. All right, so you guys also saw that we found a bunch of pronghorn out here. They are about 250 yards out, but they're not too far away from this hunting stand out there. If you look right behind you, you can see there's a tower stand there, which is gonna be probably about 100 yards out, maybe even less from these pronghorn. Now my goal is to try and get up in that tower stand there and see if we can't take down a couple of those pronghorn. Then I found something else super special as well. As a matter of fact, there he is right there. Take a look at that beautiful piebald whitetail buck. That right there is a 180 plus whitetail and he's a rare. Man, this is gonna be one heck of an awesome moment. But there he is right there, bedded out there at about 350 yards. Now you can see he's a really smart buck because he's actually in the brush, but he's also out in the open to where he can see. He can see a long ways away, so we got to be super cautious when we try and get close to this super spectacular buck. All right, guys, welcome back. It's time to get real. I'm going to show you exactly what we plan on doing right now. So we're over here by La Hacienda. We have our tent set up right here, and the pronghorn are going to feed right here at about 940 in the morning. So we're going to work our way, get into this tower stand here, and try and get these pronghorn. Now, the pronghorn bed over here, so they should be crossing over. And if we're on this side coming in from here, then they're never going to be able to catch our scent. So we should be setting pretty good. After that, then we're going to work our way down and try and sneak up on this sweet piebald. White tail buck. Now we have the AR-223, we have the AR-308, and we also have the hawk edge bow, as well as the recurve bow. It'd be pretty sweet if we could get in range to take a shot with that recurve bow on this pronghorn. I'll tell you that. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to pull it off, but it would be pretty sweet if we could definitely make that happen. All right, guys, we just got in our tower stand. Now we're all set, we're locked and loaded. We got the AR-308 ready. Probably not going to use that. We also have the Hawk Edge bow loaded with the 420s. Most likely we'll probably use that, but then we do have the recurve bow and I would absolutely love to use this. But boy, they're going to have to come super, super close. I'm talking, they're going to have to come within 50. I might go for a 50 yard shot. I just might. For sure 40. If he's 40, we're let one fly. All right, guys, take a look over here. We got Whitetail moving in already. Now these white teal here are actually going to go over and feed. This is not the same herd of white tail that our rare white tail buck is in. And what's interesting is I honestly don't know where our buck feeds. Or I should say, I don't know where he drinks. Because I know there's a bunch of white tail does here and a small buck. 
But I've checked this whole lake here and I can't find any sign of where our rare piebald whitetail buck actually does drink at. So maybe he goes to a completely different lake. Here we go, guys. Here we go. We got motion. We got motion. We got pronghorn coming in here. We got our first pronghorn buck right there, 90 yards out. We got a couple more coming in as well. There's a decent level of three, and that is... Oh, well, I thought that was going to be a big one, but there's a nice level three right there. I think that's actually going to be the biggest one. There's two more coming in as well. That's a decent size one. That one's not quite as big there, but looks like we're going to go for maybe like a 90-yard shot, and that is definitely doable. Looks like ooh, that's going to be about 80 yards right there. You know what? That just might work, guys. That just might work. 80 yards, perfectly broadside. Got a bit of crosswind, so we're definitely going to have to compensate for that. But we'll hold a tad bit on to the right of that shoulder. Well, let's draw back here. I'm going to try and hold right for the heart. 87 yards. And hopefully that one behind it. Oh, it bet it down. That is not a shot that I'm comfortable with. Well, at least we know exactly how far he is. But we're going to have to wait for him to stand back up because that is not a shot. Oh, look at this. We got a gobbler calling right behind him as well. So we actually might be able to get a nice shot on this pronghorn and then be able to call in this gobbler. Oh, I see him right there's the gobbler. There's the gobbler. Let's see how big he is. Oh, max weight, max weight gobbler. There he is 180 yards out from us. So I honestly think that if we take a shot here at 80 yards on this big pronghorn buck here, I don't think our gobbler would spook from that because he's about 150 out. But we don't have a shot like I was saying before. This one is a decent sized pronghorn buck here, but he's nowhere near as big as the one in the back. We could definitely... Oh, he's standing up. He's standing up. Okay, guys, here we go. 87 yards. 87 yards. Let's get zeroed in. Did he just bed back down again? <laughs> he did. <laughs> he just bedded right back down. What a smart big old pronghorn buck. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, he's a good one. He's a real good one. Definitely gold potential. But we got to get him to stand back up. And we got to remember to hold right to compensate for that wind. Oh, you know, we've been waiting so long to take a shot on this pronghorn, but he just will not stand up. I honestly think we don't have any choice other than going for a shot. If we hold it right where that grass turn... Oh, he's standing up. He's standing up. Finally. All right, here we go. 87 yards. That's what we need. 87 yards. Perfect shot. I held forward on him. It should have been perfect. I think he just tipped over, guys. Oh, my God. I think he just tipped over. Oh, my God. I don't see him. I don't see him. I think he's down. What a shot. 87 yards out of a tower stand. We got him. I honestly probably should have checked the wind before we took that shot there. Because, uh, well, the wind is blowing directly in our face now. And we had no reason to hold right. But luckily, it didn't really matter too much. Because we still kept it on that front shoulder. Now, let's see if this gobbler just might come in. Oh my god, you guys, here he comes, here he comes. Here comes our Max Way Gobbler coming right in. Take a look at this. Oh, here we go. This is going to be so awesome to take him out of this tower stand. Big old redhead coming right in. All right, come on, keep on coming. Now, we don't have decoys, so... He's going to be a little bit hesitant on coming in because he is such a big old gobbler. But if we call just the right amount... Oh, look at He's getting excited. He's getting fired up. He's coming in hot right now. Here we go. Yeah, we're calling just the right amount. He's flapping his wings. I bet if we had decoys out right now, he'd come in full strut. He's approaching the 80-yard mark here any second now. Ooh, here he comes. Oh my god. Looks like he might be actually working his way around to the left side here. And if that's the case, we'll go for a shot right out this window. Now, in this case here, we are going to have to compensate for the wind. Because the wind is definitely blowing off to the left side here. 
So, but then again, if it's going to be less than 30, we're not going to, yeah, we're not going to have to compensate for the win. He's coming right in perfect. Oh my God. Look at this guys. He's 40 yards out. He's in range. He is in range. Let's get ready. That's a shot. Wait for him to slow down. Smoked him. Right in the neck. He's down. Perfect shot. Big gobbler down. Woo. All right. All right. Anyways, let's get down and go see how we did. First, let's go over here and pick up our sweet gobbler we took at about 40 yards out of the tower stand. All right. Here he is right here. Let's take a look. Perfect left lung shot, 43 yards. Looks like we got him right in the wishbone there. Just nicked the bottom of the neck there. 4.43 gold, a light buff. Gobber down. Beautiful gobber indeed. All right, before we do anything, I definitely want to throw in the 420s back into the compound bow. Now we're going to go back over here and take a look at our big pronghorn buck. In fact, there's still a couple out there. We definitely got the biggest one down. So let's see if we can't go over here and figure out where he went. Dude, he's laying right there. He's laying right here. Oh my God. We must have taken the shot right here somewhere. Yep, right here as a matter of fact. And let's take a look at the blood. That is a vital hit. Awesome shot. And our pronghorn didn't go 20 yards and piled up right over here. Oh, heck yes. Let's take a look at our pronghorn buck, guys. It's going to be a 73.45, just shy of a gold, but an 88-yard awesome left lung shot. Almost got left lung and neck. But the reason I'm saying it was an awesome shot is because, I mean, I pretty much aimed right in that spot. Had we checked the wind before I took the shot, I would have held right here and we would have hit right there. But I held here because the wind was pushing. And by the time he actually did stand up, about 30 minutes went by real time. You guys didn't see that. But anyways, yeah, we waited for forever to take the shot. In fact, I was about to take the shot. I was using bet it out there at 88 yards. But we waited. Finally, he did stand up. And we made a count. Nice pronghorn buck is down. All right, guys. Now you know what we're going after next. Our sweet, rare, piebald whitetail buck. Now, we got some whitetail right out there at about 300. And that's the exact location that we last saw him bed. Right over there. There's a turkey in the way. But I'm kind of curious why this deer keeps on moving around. I think it finally might have just bedded down. Nonetheless, we have a perfect wind and an awesome opportunity to be able to sneak up close into range to take a shot on this sweet rare whitetail buck. All right, guys, we're approaching the 150 yard mark from where we last saw that whitetail buck bedded. He is right on the inside of this brush right in front of us here. You can see this brush here is about 50 yards out and he's just on the backside of that ridge right there. We're gonna have to be super careful and watch extremely carefully because it's gonna be so difficult to be able to see them in this thick, dense brush. All right, guys, they're right on the backside of this ridge right in front of us. Right in front of us. I'm talking right there. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. They're bedded right there. They're bedded 50 yards in front of us. There's a buck less than 20 yards away from us right there. We gotta back up a little bit. All right, so the deer are right there. All we gotta do is find that rare piebald. Oh my God, there he is. There he is right there, guys. He's 22 yards away. I don't quite have a shot. That's a shot, that's a shot, 22 yards. He's quartering a little bit, but that is definitely a shot. Smoked him! We got him! We got him, guys! We just snuck up to 20 yards out from this rare piebald, beautiful buck. And we took him down with the recurve bow. Oh, wow, that is unbelievable. And take a look at how sweet this buck looks. He's an awesome looking buck too. He's got a sweet rack on him. Just a perfect opportunity and an awesome buck to be able to take down. I am so pumped about this. Let's take a sweet picture of this thing. 
I'll tell you what, this thing is awesome. I think we're going to go with that. And let's pick him up. Oh my god, it's almost a gold of 190 plus rare piebald whitetail buck. Took him at 23 yards out. And take a look at how sweet this buck is right here. I do believe this is our second biggest rare piebald whitetail of all time. We did in fact get a big gold rare piebald, but we've never gotten one that was, or I should say, we haven't gotten one since. We did get like a 160 or something like that not too long ago. But this thing is awesome. 190 plus rare piebald whitetail buck. And we took him down with the recurve at 23 yards. Talk about a perfect shot as well. Look at that. Went right through the shoulder and still ended up getting a nice lung hit on this beautiful big whitetail piebald buck. And it all worked out in the end. It definitely did. What an incredible looking buck though. Man, that looks just so cool. I can't get over how sweet this rare piebald looks. I honestly can't get over it. And I'm so glad we finally got the big rack. When I say by big rack, I'm saying this rack here could go anywhere from like 170 all the way to 198. And since we got a 190 plus, that's pretty sweet. Look at how much white that thing has on them. Wow. All right, guys. Well, anyways, that is definitely going to wrap up this hunt. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had a blast out here. Again, thank you so much for all of you guys. All the support. You guys are all so, so amazing. And I'm grateful to have you guys all. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Oh, you can guarantee that thing's getting mounted. Oh, in a heartbeat.